Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to learn how to create this action man. So I've got some Saraceno um, modelling paste and I've just used the skin tone and I've added a little bit of chestnut. And we're going to roll just like a rough round shape. We're going to trim the bottom off um, once we work out how big it is that we want it. Now I've got this one so it's coming out of the top of an army cake. So we're just going to do the torso. So you can see I've taken off the bottom, I'm leaving the top quite rounded and I'm just tapering it in towards the bottom a little bit. I'm going to trim off some more excess from the bottom. You want the bottom to be quite smooth and flat so that it sits nicely on top of the cake. And then we're going to define it a little bit. So just underneath where the pecs will be, we're just going to rub up and down and that's just going to create a bit more definition for the stomach where it's going to be muscly and then we're going to bring it in where the shoulders um, and the neck are going to be a little bit. So now I've got the scriber tool and I'm just going to create a straight line um, from the middle just down to the bottom and this is going to be the line that's uh, through the stomach and we're going to create a belly button so we're just going to put a little bit of a crease in there and then just use your tool to make a little bit of a hole. Next we're going to work on the pecs, um, so just some little blobs of Saracena and we're going to just create two set, sort of like oval shapes and then we're going to stick them on where the pecs would be on the body. So I'm just flattening that in place, I'm just standing it up to make sure that it looks okay. And then with our tool, the scriber needle, I find better, just redefining that line. And we're going to push them back together because you don't want a gap to be there but you kind of want it to be a bit straight. And then we're just going to put some um, little creases in the middle. found it better to do it with the scriber needle because it's a finer tip. And then we're going to create the nipples. Now the nipples need to be towards the bottom and in the middle. So just creating two little lines and opening that up a little bit and then just smoothing over. I'm trimming off the top bit there and we're going to round that in again and just redefine those lines if you found that you've smudged it out of place a little bit. So next we're going to create the abs. So again similar kind of shapes to what the pecs are but we're going to do them a bit smaller. Now I added an extra two because when this went on the cake I just felt it was missing something in the middle um, so if you wanted to do it how I did it then I did six of these so again the, the third set would be a lot smaller than the, the middle set or the second set on this one so you just want to test it against the pecs that are already there square off the edges that are touching because again we want these two touch like they did before and then you're just going to push them into place once you've got the right shape. So you can see I wasn't happy with the size, I think they came up a little bit too much off the chest um, so I made them a little bit smaller so they sort of like sat behind the pecs rather than in front of. So again you're just squaring off the edges and then just pushing them into place on the body. And then you can redefine the line if you want to in the middle. And then just using your modelling tool just to flatten the underneath side um, so that it's less rounded because they kind of want to be almost like a squirrel. So like a square but it's got oval edges. And then once you're happy with those, we're going to stick the second set on. Again, just using the same kind of method as what you've used for the top ones. So making it a little bit smaller to fall in line with the ones that I've just done. And using your fingers just to flatten them out. So once you've pushed those into place and again flattened the bottom, if you wanted to put the additional two on that's what I would do now. Um, you may prefer the look of just the 
four that are there. Um, but once you're happy with the shape that you've got, we're then going to create some lines um, just at the side to make it look like he's got a bit of muscle at the side as well. So again, I'm just using my modelling tool for this and the lines want to go up towards the kind of shoulder area and you want to match the same on the other side. So next we're going to work on the arms. Now, because this is an action man, army man, muscle man, whatever it is that you want to call him, the arms need to be thicker than normal because obviously we want to build in those muscles. So you're going to roll the arm in the same way you usually would do and flatten out the hand part, leaving the top of the arm quite thick. We're going to work on the hand first. So we're going to cut out the thumb. And then we're going to leave the other fingers together for this one because they're going to be folded anyway so you're not going to be able to see them. We're going to round off the thumb and then just create some lines underneath the bottom of the palm and then just thin out the wrist a little bit. Twisting the whole arm so we're not just going to end up with a, a thin wrist and then it just gets fat all of a sudden. And then trim off the round bit of the hand to make it more the actual shape of a hand. Then with um, your modelling tool, we're going to create two lines in the palm. A thicker line at the bottom and then a thinner line at the top. And this is just going to allow the hand to bend in quite a natural way. So it's not going to go too rounded. And we're going to be able to sort of recreate a fist. So you fold the middle part first and then you fold the other part over and check in your own hand and I've got a picture of a man uh, tensing his muscles to look at. We're going to have to make the um, top of the fist flat and then again another flat part because it is quite, when you look at a fist it is quite angled. And then we're going to create the fold in the arm and pinching in the elbow because we want the elbow to be quite pointy. And it is just a case of working and reworking the arm, figuring out how long you want it, what looks best and pushing the muscles and everything into place. So you can see I'm just fattening up that little bit at the bottom and recreating the line in the middle to create that fold that would naturally be there. Another one at the top because obviously we want the bicep to be bulging. Just creating the illusion of it being a big muscle. And then we're going to trim off any excess in case it's a bit too long. I'm going to leave this to dry. I think I left the arm to dry maybe about 20 minutes. Because it's Saraceno it holds its shape quite well. So you can see it looks perfect. It's the right kind of size. We're just redefining the wrist. Just keep having to play around with it until you're happy nipping in the elbow and then we're going to attach this with a cocktail stick and a little bit of water so we're going to stick the cocktail stick into the body cut enough so that it comes through towards the base of the elbow and then we're going to leave it to dry lying down for about half an hour before we stand it up So you can see I'm just trying to shift the part of the hand that would be curling over. Just smoothing out any lines that you've made that you don't want to be there. And then when I've stuck this on, I've just put a little bit of tissue underneath the wrist to keep it up to stop it from flopping over. So just a little bit of water to attach and then just pushing it into place. 
So once you're happy that that's secure, if you take your small piece of um, kitchen roll and just place that underneath the wrist and leave that to dry. Whilst that's drying, we're going to work on the neck. So the neck for this one's quite fat and thick because he's been working out all of his life. So we always want to cut on an angle and we want to make the bottom of the neck thicker than the top. So I'm just going to smooth out the bottom by pinching um, the bottom of the fondant and then just create a line in the middle and we're going to leave that to dry. Next we're going to work on the head. So I've done quite an oval head, thinner at the top and bigger at the bottom because he's doing a big smile. And we're just going to create some eye sockets first. So the eye sockets, you're just using your uh, little fingers to create those and then smoothing over the bridge of the nose just with a, a paintbrush. And then we're going to pinch the nose a little bit. So the nose is uh, quite masculine. You don't want too much of a dip in between the eye sockets. It needs to be quite long and straight because we're going to stick the nostrils on for this one. So I'm just using a combination of my fingers and my modelling tool and just pinching that together. Once you're happy with the shape of your nose, we're going to go on to draw the mouth. So I've just got a Dresden tool and I'm just going to create the space where the teeth are going to go. So you want sort of a half semicircle type shape pulled further down towards the chin and it doesn't have to be too defined this because once we put the teeth in we're then going to work on uh, sort of like the corners of the mouth and things like that so just reshaping around the nose if need be and just pushing the corners of the mouth quite far up it wants to be deep enough to be able to sit the white fondant in there. You don't want the white fondant coming in front of what would be the lips. It needs to sit in there quite nicely. And so for this I've just got a tiny little bit of the Renshaw's modelling paste. And you're going to create sort of like a sausage that's thinner at either side and quite fat in the middle. And you're just going to push that into place and then use your modelling tool to push the teeth where you need them to go and then pull it down in the middle so pulling that top lip down that's going to hide the join and then pushing the lip up at the bottom that's going to hide the join at the bottom as well And then with the scriber tool, we're going to create the line for the teeth. So coming from the corners of the mouth and coming down to the front. And then redefining that lip as well. Now when you do the corners of the mouth, you want to make sure that you push down a little bit so that the teeth uh, sort of go into the mouth a little bit. And that way it's going to create more of a sort of a, a natural arch for the teeth rather than being flat to the figure and then I've created some dimples either side and then we're just going to remove off any excess with a brush to give us a better shape for the face now once I've taken off any excess and I go to work on the chin I always use the brush and I push the chin bit up because the chin needs to come a little bit further forward so you can see I'm still just playing about with the mouth until I'm happy, tucking in the areas that need to be tucked in. And just smoothing that out with my fingers. So now just taking really tiny amounts of the Saraceno and we're just going to put the nostrils on the nose. So you only need a tiny little bit of water to be able to stick these on. Too much and they'll just slip over everywhere. 
So just push that into place. Now I pushed them into place and then I made a nostril with one of my Serac tools, just where that ball joins in with the nose. And then just tucking it under. And just keep having a play around with it until you're happy with the shape. Using my modelling tool just to redefine the bridge of the nose. Again, you want quite a masculine face. So you can see I'm smoothing out with my finger and I'm putting two lines in with my brush. That's going to create the chin area. And you can see I'm pushing that up with the end of the brush. Gives it quite a nice point. So for the eyes, you can see here that I cut one eye open, but then I decided I wanted his eyes closed. So I've taken one of my circle cutters and I'm just cutting um, a circle out and I'm going to trim the bottom off to make it flat. And then we're going to push these into place. So I've done quite long eyelids for this one. Once you're happy with the rough shape, you can just push it on. You don't need water to stick this together with the Saracena. And I'm just using my modelling tool just to smooth out the lid and push it into place where I want it to be. And then once you're happy with one side, you can go repeat the same for the other. And so now I've just got my scriber tool and I'm just creating two lines in the corners just for some laugh lines, wrinkles. And then we're going to use the back of the um, stitching tool just to create the line in the back. And we want a cocktail stick to hold on the neck and attach the head. Now I actually used one for the neck and one for the head as well. So once you're happy with the position of the neck, you can attach the head. So that's what it should look like by now. I always like to attach the head, make sure that it's right and it's the right size before I stick everything together. So a little bit of water just to stick the neck on. And just check again that I'm happy with the shape and size. We're going to re-put in the lines on the neck because it rubbed out a little bit. And then we're going to have a go at sticking on some ears. So again, small blobs of the Saracena and you want a little blob of water. And we're just going to push that into place. And using the back of the brush, angling it down towards the chin, we're just going to push that in. I always like to pull out the ears a little bit so it's not flat to the face. And then we're just going to do the same for the other side. So pushing it into place, using the back of the brush in the same way, angling it down towards the chin. At this point I always remember that I haven't done the hair and so I end up taking the head off again anyway just to do the hair. These that I'm creating now for the shoulders. So again similar shape to the pecs that we did but you don't want to flatten them, flatten them down as much, they still need to be a bit rounded. And we're just going to stick those in place. I actually ended up putting another layer over this to make them a little bit bigger. So now we're going to do the hair, so there's the head off the body again. First of all we want to create a crown, so just flatten it out with your fingers, it doesn't have to be perfectly round or neat. I always attach on at the back of the head first, pulling forward over the top of the head, and then the excess that's near the ears we're going to trim off with some scissors. I find that scissors are easier to work with than cutting it off with a knife. So once you've made your cut, you just use your fingers to blend that area together again. And just tucking in the sides of the hair. And then we're going to work on adding a part in. I'm just smoothing out, as I was working on the hair, the body was staring at me so I'm smoothing out the joins just on the shoulders that I've put on. We're going to check the head on the body. I 
and then we're going to line up the parting and everything after we've made some sideburns. So they need to be quite small, you don't need any water to stick these on and just push that into place to hide that blend and then just do the same for the other side. So it's up to you where you want the parting to go, I always prefer a side parting and then you're just going to use your scriber needle just to um, in hairlines before we stick on any additional hair. So it doesn't have to be too neat because it is hair at the end of the day which can be a bit messy. So you're just pulling that down from the parting line that you've made and then the hair on the back of the head needs to come from the neck up to the crown which is the back of the parting. Just re going over some areas that I felt needed a bit more definition. And now we're just going to work on the front of the hair. So, all in all, I've added three strips one for the smallest parting section, and then two for the other side. So, you've rolled in like a teardrop and flattening that out a little bit. And then again, using the scriber needle just to put in the hair lines. And then we're going to Pinch that together a little bit and that's going to create our first quiff. We're going to do another one exactly the same way that we did before. So we're going to take the first one off and we're going to put this sort of halfway down and just blend in that line at the top so you can't see the join and then we're going to put the bigger one over the front and push that into place again just pushing it down where the parting is and just keep playing around with it until you're happy with the shape and position and then we're going to do the same for the uh, other side of the parting And we need to do some eyebrows as well. So just pushing that into place. And then re going over the lines if you've blurred them a little bit. So that's the hair done. Now we're going to just do the eyebrows. So we want to roll some tiny little bits of the fondant and they do need to be quite small, thinner at one side than the other so you're looking for a teardrop shape and then we're going to flatten it slightly. We're just going to use a tiny little bit of water to stick these on. Pick them up with the scriber tool because we're going to just draw on some little lines with that anyway. You might be better off putting these on before you've got the hair on, but I always forget about eyebrows. So it's always something I do last, especially on men. So just pushing that into place until you're happy with the shape and the position. And then just going on and just putting in some rough lines. Once you're happy with the eyebrows and everything, the last thing that we need to do is just to create some definition on the eyelid. So I've got some dark brown sugar flare and I'm just painting on a really thin line, nothing too thick otherwise he's going to look like he's got mascara on. So just using a really thin brush, it's quite watered down as well so it's not going to be too dark. I've attached this to the cake with a cocktail stick underneath and a little bit of water. Once you're finished you should have something that looks like this. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more of my videos please click the links that are coming up on the screen in a minute. I do have a Facebook page where you can ask me questions directly and get involved in what my next tutorial is going to be. 
that's it for today guys thanks for watching